Now, something else that you need to go through and uh, worry about is the hard drive. When I create a virtual machine, we have virtual hard drives. And there are different types of virtual hard drives. By default, we're going to have a dynamically expanding hard drive. And this is on table 8.2 over on page 179. A dynamically expanding hard drive is what a lot of folks like to use. Because I can say, I want to have a two terabyte drive. Well, congratulations. Two terabyte drive on your virtual machine? Really? Well, yeah, that's what I want. But it's not going to take two terabytes right off the bat. It's going to start off small. And then as you add files to it, as you make modifications to it, it's going to expand. It's going to expand. And eventually, depending upon how active the machine is, it's going to get to a specific size and kind of stay around there. It might expand a little bit. Because as you delete things, and as you add things, and as you delete things, and as you add things, this dynamically expanding drive is not a dynamically contracting drive. It's dynamically expanding, which means it expands, and then as you delete stuff, it still stays expanded. Now, you can go in and you can compact the drive, which removes the white space. But the problem with dynamic drives is it has to expand. So if you have stuff already on that hard drive besides your virtual machine disk drive, you could end up fragmenting. And when it fragments, it slows down. So this is not the fastest. Also, if I'm going to drop a big old file in there, I'm going to drop a big old file in there. <laughs> it has to expand, which means this is slower to write. So what about just pre-expanding it? Well, that's where we get into fixed size. With fixed size, what this does is I say, I want to have a 50 gig hard drive. Boom, I have a 50 gig hard drive. It makes a file that's 50 gig in size. It's not going to get larger. It's not going to get smaller. And it is going to consume all that space the second you say, create this drive. So the advantage is it's not going to fragment because it's already expanded. And so you don't run into the read-write impact, the read or the write impact that you would have with dynamically expanding. It's going to be pre-expanded, so it works out quite fast. It is faster than dynamically expanding. We'll talk about uh, differencing in just a second. We also have what's called a physical pass-through disk. Physical pass-through disk means that I'm going to have a disk drive. Let me put the arrow where I'm not standing. <laughs> I'm going to have a disk drive that is dedicated to that virtual machine. And when I say dedicated to that virtual machine, I mean dedicated to the virtual machine. You can't use it for anything else. You can't, you, you can't mount it on the host operating system. Oh, I notice you have a drive there. Well, <laughs> I can't use it. Don't assign it in Server Manager, because if it's assigned to any other virtual machine or the host operating system, you cannot use it. This is a pass-through disk, which means it's dedicated to that virtual machine. This is the fastest form of hard drive. And we find a lot of machines, you know, they're running data center with all these virtual machines on here. And if they want performance, they will use dedicated drives. So a dedicated pass-through physical disk is the fastest. Now let's talk about this, this one little guy right here, this differencing disk. Differencing disks are kind of interesting. We talk about this over on page 180. And what happens is, this is uh, what you use in the test environment. You have the file. Let me go ahead and do this right here. So here is my file, which is my VHD. And we can set up a baseline VHD. Let's say, for example, we're going to have one here that has R2 installed, 2008 R2. But we don't really want to make modifications to that operating system. So what I can do is, is I can associate a differencing disk to this baseline disk. And then, once I've made that association, any changes that I say, hey, make a change to this disk, it doesn't go to the baseline disk. Instead, it goes to the differencing disk. OK. Now, the problem with this is, is it can be slow, because it, now it has to talk to two files. But the big advantage is, especially in a testing environment where I'm doing software testing, software engineering, all of that, my baseline disk, I can set this thing to read only. And it will never change. So if I want to prototype this R2 server, and this R2 server, and this R2 server, and this R2 server, maybe this R2 server over here, they can all use this baseline disk, which is set to read only. 
But then all the modifications, all the roles, all the software, all the viruses, all the games that I install on here is going to be on the differencing disk, not on the baseline disk. And this works really, really well, but it's slow. You don't want to do this in a production environment because it's very slow. Not super, 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 super slow, but it, it's, it, it's slower than a dynamically expanding drive because you have to deal with two files. So be aware of that. So let's go ahead and show you how you can make a brand new hard drive. Now, typically, I make the hard drives while I'm making the virtual machines, but you can create them beforehand if you like. So I can go in and I can say that I want to uh, create a brand new disk. So we'll say new and I can create a brand new floppy disk Ooh, or a brand new hard disk. If I say brand new hard disk, it'll say now this is going to help you create a hard disk. Yeah, duh, <laughs> I'll say next. And it says, well, what size, what type of disk would you like? Questions and answers, Q and A. I want to store as little as possible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a 50 gig hard drive, but I don't want it to be 50 gig in size unless I need it. So what type of drive would I make? Would I make a fixed size, dynamically expanding, or differencing? So I just, I wanna write to the drive, all my changes on the drive, but I don't wanna just set aside 50 gig on my hard drive right away, because I may not need that much. So questions and answers, chat up at the top, or you can say A, B, and C, whichever on your little votey thing. Um, what size hard, or what type of hard drive would I make? So I wanna start off small, grow, I don't care about performance yet, and people are chatting in. Yeah, I'm going to create a dynamically expanding drive. Dynamically expanding. Now when you use the create a new virtual machine wizard, this is the type of drive that you get, unless you pick something else. So I'm going to say dynamically expanding. I'll say next. What do you want to call it? And remember, if you delete a virtual machine, it's not going to delete the drives. <laughs> Thank goodness. However, that means that if I'm going in and I'm making all these virtual machines and I'm putting these new drives in and I do all this other cool stuff, those files are going to persist even if I delete the virtual machine. So I'd have to go in and clean them up. So this path is actually a pretty good idea to, to be aware of. So, Let's go ahead and create a brand new virtual machine. We will call this one our Windows, W-N-D-O-W-S. We'll call it Windows 9. Ooh. Then I'll say next, and it says, well, how big? And I can have a 127 gig maximum. And it also shows us that we can copy the contents of a physical disk. Say what? Yeah, isn't that cool? I can use this to say, okay, I want to migrate a physical drive into a virtual machine, and I don't want to use physical pass-through, I just want to copy the files over. So if I have the physical disk attached to my host operating system, I can say, hey, just take the contents of this disk and copy it over here, and it'll go ahead and do that copying for us. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to make this a 50 gig drive. So I'll say next. And we have our description, and it says dynamically expanding. It's going to be called Windows 9.VHD. I'll say finish. And now I have a brand new dynamically expanding disk. And you can do dynamically expanding. You can do differencing. It's actually pretty easy to do. Now, one of the things that we may want to do is um, if I am going to copy a drive, and I know how big that drive is, I would probably want to do a fixed size. The process is the same, you just say fixed size, but then you can just put that drive in there and then copy it over. They call that cloning, and this is over on page uh, 181, where you can create a fixed size disk and clone a local drive, which I've pretty much shown you. If you want to do a pass-through drive, what you need to do is you need to attach a hard drive to your host operating system, but you need to make sure that you do not mount it. You want to make sure that you don't go in and format it because then that associates it with the host operating system and it simply won't work. So what I would do is I would go in and I would say, hey, I want to make a path, physical pass-through disk. And notice that when you do a physical pass-through disk, it's not new. If I go in a new hard drive, the options that I have here is I have differencing, dynamically expanding, and fixed size. 
I do not have a physical disk. So uh, how do you mount a physical disk? Well, you would create the virtual machine, for example, this guy right here, this little SharePoint server, and I can go into the settings of my SharePoint server. Then I would go in and I would select uh, IDE controller, and on this IDE controller, I would actually go in and say, I want it to be a physical disk drive. Now, this machine happens to be saved, so I can't, I can't modify it. But I would be able to go in and I would say, this is going to be a physical hard drive. And you just tell it what drive controller and what drive it is that you want to mount. Uh, just make sure that it is listed as offline. So you'd go into your server manager here, and I would go into storage. And uh, where's my storage at? Bum, bum, bum. There we go. Last thing listed is storage. And I would go into my disk management, and it's going to show all the drives. But what I want to do is, is I am going to list it as offline. So it's going to go in and it's going to find our disk management, and it'll pull the stuff in. I would select the drive, and I would need to put it into offline. So be very, very cautious as far. Now, this is my operating system. I can't necessarily make that offline. But you are going to want to have that drive offline before you try and assign it to a virtual machine. All right, done that, done that. Let me show you how we can manage our virtual disks. And we do have a couple of options that are available for us. So let me go in, back into my virtual machine, and I can say inspect a disk. And it's going to say, all right, well, in that nice little folder that you created, these are all of the virtual drives that you have. And what I can do is, is I can go in and I can say, I want to inspect that disk. And it'll go through and it'll say, oh, that's a differencing hard drive. This is where it's located. This is the file name. And if it is associated with other drives, it is showing me a parent. Now, that's a differencing drive. And remember, differencing drives, you have the parent drive, and then you have this little child drive. So it requires both of these on that Hyper-V machine to be able to go in and gain access to it. Now, I also have the ability to do uh, edit disk. If I say edit disk, then we're off to see the wizard. This is over on table 8.3 on page 182. And I can say next. Then we locate the drive. So I'll go in and select the drive. Now, you got to remember, this has to be a drive that is um, uh, doesn't have snapshots. Uh, also, if we have differencing virtual hard drives, you can't edit it when it's doing that. Because what happens is, is it's going to start to compact it and change it and do all that. So your differencing drive and your snapshots are all going to be lost. So what is it that you want to do? So we'll say next. We can compact it. Compacting it removes the white space. So remember when we talked about dynamically expanding drives, they get larger and larger and larger, and then they kind of stabilize around a certain size because you're deleting files? Well, remember when you install the operating system, depending upon the operating system you install, it may copy a whole pile of junk on there that you don't want. So it copies, 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 then it install, installs the operating system. Once the operating system is installed, it deletes all these files. So your differencing drive went bleep, and now it's half empty or three quarters empty. By going in and saying compacting, it will remove all of the white space. Now, on a physical drive, <laughs> not going to do you a whole lot of good. On a um, fixed size drive, not going to do you a whole lot of good. But this is great if you have a dynamically expanding drive. Now, I can also go through and convert it. When I do a convert, this will modify a dynamically expanding drive to a fixed size drive by simply copying the contents and pointing it to a different location. We can also expand, and by expanding, we said, oh, yeah, I wanted to have a 50 gig drive, and I only put in a 40 gig drive. I'm going to add an additional 10 gig to it. And it allows you to do that. Now, one of the cool things that they have is they have the, this nice little help file, more about editing virtual hard disks. And I can fire this off, and it brings up a really nice help environment that helps you to understand what these various settings do. And one of the ones that is very useful is reconnect. Reconnect is very useful for differencing disks because you have the baseline disk and then you have the differencing disk. The differencing disk has to be associated with baseline disk. And if for some reason somebody deleted the baseline VHD or moved it to a different location or did some other nefarious act, 
all of a sudden that operating system won't work. Oh, wait a minute, I, I need to find my, my baseline disk. You can go in and you can reconnect it, which says, hey, this is where the, the, uh, the mother disk is. Let's reassociate that, uh, that baseline disk to our differencing disk, and then we'll be back in business. But one of the things I want to emphasize is that Microsoft has done a really good job, especially over the last uh, decade, of improving the usefulness of the help files. I remember when Windows 2000 came out, there was a lot of instances where you'd go into the help file, and the help file would say, insert help text here. <laughs> they didn't put the help text in there. But as time went on with 2003 and 2008 and 2008 or 2 and 2012, they have really done a great job in uh, improving the documentation. So if you get lost, even before you necessarily use Google Foo, <laughs> You know, I, I would I would probably search the Microsoft website, but just Google. Remember, anybody can put a web page, and Google will find it and put it in there. And a lot of times, there's really bad advice. But try the Windows help files. The Windows help files can lead you by the hand. They also may include links for more information, and it makes it a lot easier for you to be able to find exactly what it is that you're looking for. Where is this particular option? You can do that. So then I can go in, and I'm just going to compact the drive. When you do compact, that's what it does. If I do convert, then I have configuration options. Oh, I'm going to convert it from a dynamic to a fixed size. What is the name of the new fixed size disk? Because what it does, it creates a file and copies the stuff over. If I go through and I say expand, then the options are going to be, okay, this is our current size. How big would you like it to be? And notice that the new size starts off one gig larger. One gig larger. And remember, this is gigabytes. Gigabytes, not meg. So if you put 50,000, you're not making a 50 gig disk. It's not kilobytes. You're making a uh, five terabyte drive. So be aware of that.